Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is a Batignon Chatillon 155.58. It's the tier 10 French SPG. It's located on the Westbourne of Berlin in Counter and it's under the command of Chaos. Game started. Well, this is one of the faster RT in the game. It's got a top speed of 62 kilometers an hour and 14 kilometers an hour backwards. It's also one of two RTs with a swiveling turret, the other one being the Bat Chat 155.55, the tier 9 French SPG. But unfortunately, it has a 155mm gun as its main armament, and it's the only RT in the game with an autoloader. And oh, look at all these trees he's knocking down. I know they're providing cover, but they actually also provide the enemy with an indication of where you are. Not always advised. Now it's also one of the RTs with the longest reload in the game. 50 seconds. And that's for a three shot clip. Now as you can see here the shells will actually do 750 alpha and they penetrate 48 millimeters of armor. That's not a lot. In fact it's the lowest penetration of all the tier 10 RTs. And it's got a burst radius of 8 meters, which is equivalent to some of the tier 7 RTs in the game. First shot on the Object 257. Now it's a 10 seconds intra clip reload. And then you'll be ready to go again. Rounds out again on the E75 direct hit. Now it's advisable not to actually aim for the same tank more than once. Because if you stun them, you will not get a, as much stun again the second time round because obviously after they're already stunned it attenuates any stun from the next shot. Well his last shot hit the Type 61, a direct hit and that was 713 hit points which indicates that that was a penetrating shot and the Type 61 died. You can't always guarantee you'll get a penetration with this gun as well because the penetration level is so low that even tanks with thin skins can sometimes survive them if they receive the, the shot on the right part of their vehicle. So for instance, if you fired this 155mm at a Leopard, you might not get through it. You might not get a penetrating shot. But as we saw there, he did get a penetrating shot on the Type 61. Okay, three shots are in the clip and ready to go. Waffentrager Alfpanzer Fear is over on the far side of the battlefield. He's been spotted, bounce out. This should penetrate. It actually lands nearby. The accuracy of this gun is normally quite good, but, uh, well, can't always guarantee it. That was a direct hit. He definitely touched the 257 there. He's selecting his next target, making sure he hits as many of the enemies he can, and that should guarantee he gets a Confederate medal if he does. Dialing in on the strip, long range shot, long range shot, and a direct hit. Shell disappeared without an explosion, and the strip is now missing hit points, and he was stunned briefly. Now, he's not only got one of the lowest penetrations for an RT. It's also got a, as I said, a rotating turret and that turret turns at 10 degrees a second, which is actually very slow. So ideally what you do is you park the vehicle, which is based on a batch at 25 ton hull, in the direction you want to escape, if you have to escape, because it doesn't traverse very quickly. And then you turn the turret to face the enemy. And so long as you are doing that, then you should be able to get away if the enemy finds you. Rounds out, first shot on this clip. Direct hit on the E75, but only 254 hit points, which is a non-penetrating shot. You can see the mark where it actually impacted the hull. He's fired another one in at the same target. The stun hasn't increased that much, but he did get another hit virtually on the same spot. This time for 194. He fires his third round in and another direct hit but only 184 this time, so it's decreasing in damage every time. But he did get all three shots on target. So that E75 has certainly felt his wrath, and we are capping apparently, but the capping has been blocked in the center. 
Okay, where's the next target? You can see we have basically the centre of town. Our guys have driven out the enemy heavies, but they've still got two heavies, the E-75 and the Object 257. It looks like uh, Chaos is going to take out this E-75 if he can get a shot on target, but unfortunately he's gone into cover. So instead, he's now aiming at the Charfu 204, who's actually trying to hurt his platoon mate, who's in the T-100LT. Hasn't fired yet, though. I think he's waiting for the moment that the Char Future 4 comes to a halt because of some obstacle. He's trying a leading shot now. No, that's not going to hit him. But the T100LT does get the kill. And there's the weapon trigger of Panzer Fuse trying to get that T100. Rounds out. This could kill. Oh, it doesn't. And he's only got one round left. Can he hit that weapon trigger? No. We do know there's some enemies in the south. There's a strip 1030 scene down there. He's still got that one round. He's firing at the bush, thinking that's where he is. And the cap has re been reset, but we are now capping again. Okay, as you can see, that Chaos did park his vehicle in the correct direction so he can make a quick getaway. But as he's now gone back to driving the vehicle, uh, unfortunately the turret then automatically faces the direction you're looking at the time so now he's got to realign the turret with the direction he's trying to shoot luckily he's trying to shoot forwards which means that there's minimal movement and he's going after the 257 e75 is now dead one shot should kill the object 257 he's got a clip rounds out kill so that's his first kill of the game. Oh, enemy arties spotted in the south of the map. It's an M53, M55. They've got two arties. They've also got a bat chap, 155-58. We haven't seen him yet. There's the round going out. It's a very long flight time down to the other end of the map. 2.7 seconds. Looks like it's going to have another round out. Yep. And he moves before the round arrives. And okay, it looks like he's going to depart the bridge and probably try and get a bit closer to the enemy. Cut down that flight time. He could always go to the center to the cap and help cap out. Now, this RT was never actually built, they only built a mock up, a wooden mock up of the Bat Chap 155 the tier 9 version. And this version was supposed to have a different turret to that one. Oh, there's the one, the M53. Oh, and he's been killed. So <laughs> he went to the aim, thinking that the uh, the enemy was there. There's only one tank destroyer left on the enemy team. They've killed the batch up 155-58. So it's now just that Striv 1030. And he's hit this guy before. So he's going for another shot on this target. Rounds out. This should kill. It does. And that wins the game for Chaos. But we've got another replay coming up in the very same vehicle, so we'll watch that one and then we'll have the end of battle results. The second battle in our video is on the Malinovka map, and the commander of this vehicle is Baseman from Hell. Okay. Now, one of the young features of the Ratchet on 155 58 is that it's got appalling view range. Only 280 meters, which means the enemy can creep up on you quite quickly. And uh, that can be a bit awkward if you're trying to uh, remain hidden. Baseman's gone into the wood behind the cap area. He did knock a couple of trees over, but I don't think he's worried about that. I think the enemy's probably not going to be looking in this direction at this moment anyway. And he's almost loaded. Now, remember, it's normally 50 seconds for without any uh, mods or um, not without any mods, <laughs> without any rammer or uh, or any BIA skills. You've got a nice little hit there on the mouse, who quickly cured his stun, and he's been hit again. And this time round, he can't cure his stun because his first aid kit is gone so he's now sitting there 
a little slow, sluggish. And the 10 second intra clip reload has completed, but Baseman lets the stun wear off and then fires another round in. Oh, and this time round he gets a kill. Somebody hit the mouse rather hard just before he fired his shot. And he had enough hit points knocked off to let the base man get a kill with his first, sh uh, well, his third shot in the game. First kill of the game. Okay, spotted an object 2684 using that uh, wrecked house as cover to shoot up this end. It's a particularly tough little tank destroyer, the Bobject, as it's known. It's got very heavy frontal armour, and of course the engine's up front, the crew's at the back. Now he can probably shoot through that window. Well, the first shell impacts on the outside of the building. And rather than waste another shot on that, he's actually going to have a go at a gorilla. Now one of the things about the uh, back chat is that it does style in fairly quickly. Not quite as fast as the... Um, the Soviet Arty, the 212A and the Object 261 dial in incredibly quickly. But of course they've got a very, very narrow arc of fire. And I suppose that compensates for it because you have to keep adjusting your aim as the vehicle keeps moving. Oh dear, no, that's bad news because an enemy tank, an AMX 13105, has managed to get into that ramp that in the dip, as I call it. Grid square... D7, uh, D6, because from that position he can spot a lot of enemy tanks, or a lot of our tanks, and cause lots of inconvenience for our guys, possibly even allow our guys to get shot at by tanks sniping from the back of the map. Baseman's got the reload time down to 46 seconds for his three shot clip, and he's ready to go. Now, the, the low trajectory is also causing a bit of a problem because he's having to fire over that house and he just makes it, splashes the object 269, uh, 279E. He's loaded with second shots. Looks like he's going for the object MX-50, but he actually switches target and hits the Type 5 Heavy. He's also getting some decent stun assists as well. Fires another round at 279 and stuns him and this time round he can't cure his stun because his first aid kit is on cooldown. Well, so far only two kills, but luckily they're all on base man's team. Generally, I think that the Bat Chap 155.58 doesn't generate a whole lot of damage. Rather disappointing uh, of the tier 10 Arties that, that generate so little. 313 hit points, that was a good shot. It, it actually damaged the rear of the 279E. And he's gone. Okay, so now Baseman's going to fired the last two shots at the Type 5 and the ST2 and he actually, I think he was aiming for the Type 5 but it hit the ST2 instead and now they're both together so he's firing at the one and he actually hits the other one and that time round he meant to hit the ST2 I think and he hit the Type 5 instead so he he was lucky in that sense that they both did what they did of course, aiming for one tank, the other tank backed off or moved forward into the line of shot. Yes, it's some... Um, oh, and there's that AMX-105, the one that was in the dip. The 13105, three-shot autoloader. Quite a dangerous light tank. It looks like he's moving to stem the tide, and we've just lost our 279E as well. Okay, we're aiming for the ST2. Rounds out. No. Just a bit of stun. Oh, lots of stun assist though. Next shot's in the clip. Ready to go. In the breach, I should say. Ready to go. Rounds out. Looks good. 
right into the rear of that uh, ST2. Keeps him stunned. He's, I think he's tracked. Now, despite the fact that it does very little damage to Batch at 155.58, what it does do is give you the ability to hit a very large number of the enemy. You can really spread the shells around. So long as your team holds the enemy in place, then, of course, you can apply that three-shot autoloader to hit individual tanks one by one. Or alternatively, you can fire over a very wide arc of the battlefield hitting various targets within the same clip in different spots. Of course, as I mentioned before, you've got a 10 degree per second turret swivel, or traverse I should say, and that means that uh, it does take you a little while to adjust to hit a target somewhere else, but it does mean that you can spread the, the love <laughs> over a very wide area and hit more than one spot in one clip okay he's got his last round he fires it at the st2 but he moves away just in time to avoid any damage oh that's the last shot sorry rounds out and that's better yes he got some splash on that one 136 but the st2 is now one shot unfortunately most of the tanks that are up the hill have now died there's only a 60 tp up there and a medium the object 140 it's not good news for our guys because well there's the st2 gone their force is now moving up the hill to try and take it again and we really don't have enough tanks up there to stop them so base man's probably just gonna have to try and see if he can fill in the gaps by Hitting some of these enemy tanks hard. There's that object 2684. Again, the one that was in the house. They just killed our 60 TP. And the 2684 gets rid of his stun using his first aid kit straight away. This is not good because it means they will capture the hill. And you can see that slow turret traverse there. He's trying to help the EPR-105 get past this Centurion. Meanwhile, up the hill, we can see the Object 140 is pulling back. The 2684 dies. Gets taken out by our Gorilla 15. And Baseman's got one more shell available, but he doesn't have any targets to shoot at at the moment. Except maybe for the Centurion Action 10. We just saw a tree got knocked over. And that could be the M48 pattern. But it might also be their M60. And there's no guarantee they'll be there. But he could have shot at that. And that would get the reload running. But he's holding on to that last shell. There's the pattern. So it wasn't him that knocked the tree over. So it was probably the 60TP. The M48 has gone down the cliff edge, which is a tactic I favour, because it doesn't leave you exposed to enemy fire as you're coming down the hill. Gets you into the dip, he fires a round in, and now he's in reload. And I think Baseman is now relocating a little further south, because he's now more under threat than he was, seeing as the enemy is now coming down the hill. That pattern did get killed. So he's out the game, and we're one tank up again. We were one tank down for a moment. Oh, enemy artie's been spotted, but unfortunately the base man can't do anything about it. No shells loaded yet, but he is going to be loaded momentarily, and that's where he's looking straight away, in the area where the artie was seen. Let's see if he can spot any tracer. Doesn't look like you can see anything. Now we are capping. We have got the enemy cap area. And more than likely that's going to persuade the members of the other team to come back down the hill to protect their cap. The Object 140 has gone back up onto the hill. See if he can spot where the enemy are. Ah, 
Up, there's one. The STB one. Japanese tier 10 medium. Oh, he just got tracked. Rounds out. It goes to the right, and that was RNG. And the STB one is down. So there are two tanks up on the enemy. We're also up on hit points at the moment. We've got 6,639. They've got 4,523. That's another thing. Those uh, You can get little mods, and these are Aslanes mods. These are mods which actually do help you understand what the situation is at the moment. We're up on tanks. We've got more hit points available. Up, oh, there's two of them, and it's the enemy arty. They've just lost their leopard. There's their back chat. He just got hit. Very low armor on the back chat. Yep, and he's gone. And that means now there's only three enemy tanks remaining. But those enemy tanks appear to have quite a lot of hit points. Okay, we've got one more shot to go. Now, it may appear that we've got the advantage, but... But Vantage can still switch around. Even with a two-tank Vantage, you can still lose it. Faceman is reloading, which means he can't help him. We've just lost our object 140. There's 60 TP managed to get the shot in. And you can see he's still got half his health. So now it's only a one-tank Vantage with two minutes left. We stopped the cap, but... Um, I think they ought to get into the cap again and cap with at least two. It appears the air, enemy Air Mix 13 105 was probably responsible for resetting the cap as well. But we're running short on team time now. Can't cap out with one tank on its own. We're out of time for that, so we need two tanks in the cap to make it certain. Oh, we just lost our STB again. It's that AMX 13105. The, the tank that was on the ramp. Who pulled back and... Oh, he fired a blind shot in. Uh, where he thought the AMX 13105 is. And now he's found the 60TP. He's lining up the shot on the 60TP. Rounds out. That was a good one. 235. He's got one more round to fire. You can see him. Rounds out. Now he's in long reload again. No damage because we couldn't see. Or rather, we don't know how much damage he did. Okay, Baseman is relocating. He's decided to pull back. and we're, Oh no, we've lost our rema sole remaining partner in this game on our team. The Leopard 1 got taken out by their 60 TP, and that leaves Baseman all alone with that short view range, as I mentioned, means the enemy might be able to creep up on him. It's only 280 meters, and well, they'll probably see him before he sees them. And it's, the Bat Chat 155 58 is a very big target and relatively thin armor, which makes it an easy kill if they can spot him, and they have spotted him. They found out where he is. Oh, and that is the end of the game. The Gorilla got Baseman with just one shot. And it's a defeat. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And here's the end of battle results for Chaos in the Bacchettinion 155-58. He managed to get a third class tanker in that game, which is pretty good. And he also got a bruise the medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 16 in total. And... He did get an epic medal. He got the Gauze medal for doing more damage than eight times the hit points of his own vehicle, but no high caliber. Let's have a look and see on the team score how well he did. Well, we can see that he did get the highest damage in the game, 4,057 hit points, but he probably didn't get 20% of the enemy hit pool, and that's why he didn't qualify for the high caliber on this occasion. The next high scorer was the IS-4 on his own team, and the other IS-4, funnily enough, as well. Uh, 3,468 for the first one, 3,275 for the second one. When it came to kills, he was top again with three kills. 
Uh, three kills for his platoon mate in the T100 LT. In fact, actually, no, the three kills was not for um, for Chaos. That was for the Prototipo Standard B. Um, so let me start again. And here's the end of battle results for Chaos in the Batch of Tilly on 155.58. He got a third class tanker. A Bruiser medal for getting at least 5 critical hits, he managed to get 16. A Gauze medal for doing more damage than 8 times the hit points of his own vehicle. And he did get 2 penetrations in that game. He had a Striv 1030 and penetrated him. And a Type 61, that was the one right at the start of the game. Let's have a look at team score. Well, we can see that Chaos did get the highest damage in the game, but he didn't get the high caliber because he probably wasn't be able to get 20% of the enemy hit pool in total. It was a tier 10 game. He got 4,057 hit points. The next highest score being one of the IS-4s with 3,468. And the other IS-4 managed to get 3,275. Sadly, he didn't get the highest number of kills in this game. The Prototipo Standard B got three. So did his platoon mate in the T100 LT, but we can see Chaos was following them up with joint second place with two kills alongside the IS-4s and also that M53, M55 on the enemy team. When it came to base XP, it wasn't him at the top. No, it's the IS-4s. 1089 for the first one, 959 for the second, and the Prototipo standard B managed to get 904. Chaos was a little way down the table with only 726. And I think the reason for that was he didn't do a lot of stun on a lot of targets uh, because they were curing their stun using their first aid kits. And so all despite the fact that he was recording some stun, he wasn't getting a lot overall. If we look at the detail report, we can see that he fired 16 shots, 9 direct hits, 2 penetrations, 11 splash, damage of 4,057 uh, 4, hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged 6 in the enemy, killed 2, and did 123 hit points of stun assist off 11 stuns, so very low on the stun assist. On a premium count, he earned 34,702 credits, got 14,367 from Holdy Ops, and after ammunition, respawn, and consumables, took away 33,705 credits profit. That's a decent profit for this arty. 726 XP, 1,089 from personal missions powers, 163 because he was in a platoon, and took away 2,341 experience points altogether. So a decent gain there by Chaos in the batch at 155.58. So let's have a look at the second battle with Baseman from Hell. Well, that wasn't so good for Baseman in the sense that it was a defeat, but he did the best he could with the team he was working with. He managed to get a first class tanker, which is much better than uh, Chaos did, but he also got a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 13, and he got a Confederate medal because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team, at least six tanks subsequently taken out by other teammates. His win rate for the battle was 2,735, which is Unicum standard. So let's have a look at team score. Well, I'm afraid in this game he didn't get the highest damage. In fact, he didn't even get the... Uh, he got 6th place on damage because there was two enemy tanks that scored more than him. Uh, the highest damage in the game was actually done by the 560 TP on the enemy team. He got a high caliber for 5,947 hit points. The Gorilla 15 got a Top Gun and 4,002 hit points. And then it was the 60 TP on our team with 3,446. Baseman managed to get 3,147. Wasn't that far behind on hit points. And of course he did get that Confederate medal. In fact, he's the only one who got a medal on his team. When it came to kills, I'm afraid, yeah, it's the enemy team that came out on top here. The Gorilla 15 got six kills. The 60 TP got four kills. And then there was four tanks on his own team who got two kills apiece. Base man only got the one kill, the first one, right at the start of the game. And when it came to base XP, it was um, the other team who did the best. The 60 TP got 977. The Gorilla 15 got 968. And then it was their AMX 13105. He got a patrol duty and 840 base out of that game. Their RT managed to get a confederate. Their Leopard 1 also got the same, and so did their STB1. Baseman managed to get 588 base XP, which is the best one on his team, but I'm afraid his team wasn't that good. In fact, he says it wasn't a bit of a toxic team. So, yeah. 
Okay, so let's have a look at the detail report. He fired 26 rounds in this game, got 8 direct hits, no penetrations but 26 splash, damage of 3,147 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He did receive a hit, it was from the Gorilla 15, it did penetrate and it wiped him out because uh, the Gorilla 15 does a 750 alpha and of course the Bat Chat doesn't have as much hit points I'm afraid. Nine enemy vehicles were damaged, one was killed so there was an 8 difference that earned him the Confederate. And he did get a lot of stun in this game. Three, 5,743 hit points of stun assist of 24 stuns. And that's why his XP was the top on his team. 82,815 credits on a premium account. 44,917 from Holiday Ops. 7,019 for Courageous Resistance. That's for getting a Battle Hero medal in a losing or drawn game. And he took, got a total of 134,751 credits altogether. After repair, ammunition, resupply and consumables, he still made a profit of 4,757 credits. If he'd actually had this on a free-to-play account, he would have made a loss for the game. Five bonds for this being tier 10. 882 XP overall for the game. 507 courageous resistance and 1,389 experience points to take away. So not such a good game for Baseman, but he did get a medal out of it. He was the best on his team by far, but it was a loss, I'm afraid. Yeah, I think really he made a bit of a mistake at the end of the game. Instead of, he turned around halfway up the uh, uh, the west side of the map and headed south. I think he should have headed north. If he'd gone into the woods, he probably would have been lost to the enemy. They wouldn't have seen where he was. They would have had to try and get in there and find him. And with so little time left on the clock, he might have been able to survive just a while longer. And that might have given him a bit more profit overall. So, two great battles in the Batch of Tilly on 155-58. First by Chaos and then by Baseman from Hell. If you enjoyed those replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel on both uh, YouTube and Rumble if you want to. And um, because obviously we put our videos first up on YouTube, but we then put them up on Rumble. And you might see them first on Rumble than YouTube because there's a slight delay before the video comes out. And um, leave a comment down below if you enjoyed the video. And thank you for watching.